I'm sure most Missouri fans filling out a bracket have the Tigers advancing past Utah State, but how much farther can the Tigers go than that? Well, I have them going probably farther than you expect. Plus, some big breaking news on the Missouri spring football game, so tune in for that and more coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball, and thanks to FanDuel Sportsbook for sponsoring this program, FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. And, of course, I'm going to tell you coming up in a minute why I think Missouri can beat Arizona in the second round of the NCAA tournament. But first, we got to start with football, surprisingly enough, because we got some big breaking news here in the last hour or so. The spring game scheduled for this Saturday has been moved indoors because of, well, rather cold weather, and the Tigers just might be playing in the NCAA tournament on Saturday as well. So those two factors definitely would probably murder attendance for that game, let's be honest. So if you're a Missouri fan or maybe even a podcaster, and if you thought you were going to see Sam Horn or Jake Garcia play some quarterback this this spring, <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's a good one. Well, you can forget about that because the Mizzou Mafia and Eli Drinkwitz, they're not about that. But what they are about is playing this spring game earlier than they have in the past because Drinkwitz likes to give injuries that happen this time of year during spring ball time to heal, which obviously is an upside and makes a lot of sense, but this is part of the downside, what is happening on Saturday, because often the spring game has been a month later in the past, and well, as Missouri baseball and softball fans will tell you, the difference in in temperature and weather in March and April can be pretty stark a lot of times. So there is definitely more of a risk of of just way too cold of a spring game when you don't actually play it in the spring. I don't know. Is it literally spring now? Have we gotten past the Ides of March? I don't know. What the heck? You get my point. But, of course, there's also the conflict with March Madness, too. Now that Missouri's hopefully a basketball power again, thank you, Dennis Gates, Hopefully this is a potential conflict in the future, so this is something that Drinkwitz is going to want to think about. Does he start spring even earlier than this? I don't know that that's an option, so maybe push it back a couple weeks, something like that. Maybe have the spring game on a Sunday. Maybe there's an option, the Sunday between the Final Four and the NCAA championship game. Again, we don't want to put a cap on what Dennis Gates is trying to do there, so let's look at that potential as well. But you know what? Enough with football. March Madness starts tomorrow. That's probably why most of you people are here today. And you know what? No shade at Utah State. I really mean that. And you know what, Aggies fans? Feel free to throw this segment back in my face if you all win tomorrow. I'm not assuming that you that Missouri is going to win over Utah State at all. I'm really not. I have respect for that team. Absolutely. But... Because I'm an incredibly, incredibly gallant and brave human being, I'm going to take the potential heat because this is what we do as bracket filler outers, isn't it? We project forward and we make predictions, even beyond just the first round. That's what you have to do here. And really more to the point, my wife last night informed me that many of her coworkers at Boone Hospital were saying that it's, quote, impossible for Missouri to beat Arizona in round two. Well, let me give you a little context here. Over at FanDuel Sportsbook, the Tigers are a little more than 5-1 to one to make the Sweet 16. Now, 5-1, to one, obviously, that's not a coin flip. The Tigers are underdogs, and they will be against Arizona if they potentially have that game. No doubt about it. 
But again, just for some more context here, over at FD Sportsbook, the Chiefs, the Kansas City Chiefs, of course, are 6-1 to one to win the Super Bowl next year. And they're the favorites in the NFL. So slightly longer odds for the Chiefs to win it all and repeat next year than it is for Missouri to make the Sweet 16. Anybody want to say that that is impossible for the Chiefs to repeat next year? Yeah, I didn't think so. So let's talk about Arizona then. Again, assuming that's a big, big, big assumption. I'll give you that. Assuming that Missouri gets past Utah State. And the assumption here is that all of you are picking Missouri. I know I am because let's face it. If I'm going to just pick the Tigers in and, and a toss-up scenario in the first round of the tournament, guess what? I'm going to do it without even thinking. So why can't I take them against Arizona too? Because while Arizona is definitely a good team too, with plenty of experience, well, guess what? Missouri's got plenty of experience too. And that usually translates well in March, especially in the backcourt. In fact, I like the potential matchup for Missouri here if it gets to this point. The Wildcats play fast, and offense is their calling card. But they're not dominant defensively. They're vulnerable in some ways defensively on the three, and they don't crash the offensive glass. They turn it over a little bit. So to me, that sounds like a better version of Utah State is what that sounds like. So again, if I'm going to take the Tigers blindly in round one, well, why not? Let's go round two. Because, as Kevin Garnett once said, anything's possible. And you know what? In for a dime, in for a dollar. If I'm going to have Missouri take down Arizona, well, why should we stop there? Why shouldn't Missouri make yet another Elite Eight? And no, I don't have Missouri taking down Baylor in the Sweet 16. I actually think Creighton will beat Baylor in round two. So Missouri facing off with Greg McDermott, who feels like he's been at Creighton for a thousand years now. Obviously, he's done a really good job with that program. Big man Ryan Kalkbrenner, a guy that Conzo Martin in Missouri actually recruited back in the day, obviously ended up going to Creighton. But for some reason, I like that matchup for Missouri too. There's just something about the Big East in general that's not really scaring me this time of year. So I've got Creighton. Going down to Missouri, Missouri advancing to the Elite Eight where they have a chance to make their first Final Four ever. But unfortunately, they play the Crimson Tide in the Elite Eight, at least in my bracket, and they lose there because that's as I went pretty far with Missouri, don't you think? So you got to give me some credit there. That took some balls to predict Missouri in the Elite Eight on a podcast. But you know what? I can't go any further than that, just because quite simply, Alabama proved twice that they're significantly better than Missouri. And not only that, I think Alabama is the best team in the field and I have them as my national champion. And you know what? Speaking of the Crimson Tide, Kobe Brown's struggles against Alabama in that previous game in the SEC tournament semis of course, has people again discussing Kobe Brown's future and if he is indeed a true NBA prospect. Well, I have some thoughts on that and also a guy that I think Kobe should maybe model his future NBA career after when we get there. And that man is Damari Carroll. So I want to explain more about that comparison coming up. But first, I want to tell you about, of course, FanDuel Sportsbook, our title sponsor today. And, of course, it's March Madness. We're at the very tail end of the NBA season, so it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. New customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. You can bet on absolutely everything you can imagine. Futures, money lines, totals, even combine wagers for your chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. 
Folks, you should be like me and go listen to the Locked On College Basketball Breakdown before you put down your final picks because with national insights and analysis from our local experts, the Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown has everything you need to make the most informed decisions on your bracket. They definitely influenced me. I think it's going to be very helpful. Hey, if you're just running around, you don't have time to read stuff, this is just what Locked On is great at. So find the episode on Locked On College Basketball's feeds, wherever you get your podcasts, and on YouTube. So about Kobe Brown and him potentially being an NBA player, here's one thing I want to remind people really quickly. It seems like Certain people have soured on Kobe Brown rather quickly on his NBA prospects after that Alabama game. You know, who knows if he was affected by that knee to the back of the head, but certainly he was affected by the length and athleticism of Alabama's front court. But to me, there is a path to success here for Kobe Brown. And to me, that guy is Damari Carroll. I think those two players have so much in common when you really think about it. Both guys are a little bit older than you would ideally want to be an NBA draft prospect, right? Damari Carroll was a four-year player, actually sat out a year after transferring from Vanderbilt as well. So again, if Kobe Brown wants to come back to Missouri for one more year, well, there's actually a guy who ended up playing essentially five years removed from his high school graduating class before he entered the draft. And still, to my surprise at the time, to be honest with you, Damari Carroll ended up being possibly the last pick of the first round. I know he was a first rounder, without a doubt. But again, not only they both were a little bit older than maybe ideal you'd want to be entering the draft, kind of a tweener. Too. Not really a small forward per se, not really your traditional power forward. Both guys are considered good character guys, hard workers, all that kind of good stuff. But also in more modern day basketball, the game's changed a lot since 2009. Obviously, I'm not saying 2009 isn't modern basketball, but the game has changed tremendously in just those 14 years or so. And I think somebody like Kobe Brown, who may in the back of in the back of the day been considered maybe not physically domina, dominant enough to play power forward in the NBA, not really an above the rim type of player in particular. But in this day and age, hey, the tweener's okay. Because if you can just punish the the smaller guys on a switch, hey, that's great. And you can knock down three pointers. Well, that's really the secret sauce there because Damari Carroll eventually became, in the pros, a very serviceable, even above average three-point shooter. Obviously, Kobe's been that this year at the college level. The NBA three is a little bit different, but again, remember that Kobe will not also be the primary guy offensively. He got all the attention from the Alabama defense, seemingly, at least the lion's share of it. And I just that's not gonna be Kobe Brown's reality if he makes an NBA roster. He'll be he'll be a piece. He won't be the primary option ever offensively, and that might actually help his game. Maybe he'll I think he's the type of guy that could sort of adapt well to a role playing type situation because so often guys who are true stars, true guys who want to just have the basketball at all times, they have trouble with that. So I'm not saying Kobe Brown is a is a lock to be drafted or anything, but let's not get dismissive because he had one bad game against elite competition when, again, he's not going to be asked to do what he's asked to do at Missouri in the NBA. And you know what? I'm not going to give you my entire bracket here on this podcast, but I have some more picks that I want to give to you, including some big upsets moving on farther than you might expect. Kansas going out earlier than you might expect, and some bets over at FanDuel that I like as well here in the first round. So let's get to all that right after these quick words. The older I get as an NCAA bracket a filler outer, I definitely rely more on the data for sure. But at the same time, one thing I always want to know is the significant injury statuses of significant players that aren't factored into the data as of yet. And of course, Zakai Ziegler 
for Tennessee is a big one. We've talked about him a lot on this program. Houston's Marcus Sasser. Yeah, he left the game in the tournament this past week for the Cougars, and that's a real question mark if he comes back or not. There are some analysts who say that, well, Houston will be okay. They can still make a good run without him. I'm less enthusiastic, but I'm somewhere in between. I have the Cougars being eliminated in the Elite Eight by Texas, actually. Another big-time injury, Jalen Clark of UCLA. Maybe the defensive player of the year in the Pac-12. I'm not sure if he won that award or not. I just know that he's a big-time defensive player, and really their backcourt defensively, just probably their calling card. So that makes me a little bit less bullish on UCLA. Now, as far as big upsets in the first round, one stood out to me like a sore thumb. Kentucky only giving four and a half against Providence. When I saw that line over at FanDuel Sportsbook, I went, oof, because if the Cats lose that one, that might be it for John Calipari for all intents and purposes. Yes, I'm being serious. Their fans are that insane. And you know what? Having said all that with the amount of pressure that may be on those dudes and Cal himself, the heck with it, I'm going to pick Providence to upset Kentucky. Now, I will say this. One, another thing I like to look for, who has the true upper echelon NBA talent? Well, Brandon Miller's as good as it gets, and that's a big reason why I am picking Alabama to cut down the nets. But there's a certain other team that, Where's Maroon and plays in the SEC that has some NBA talent as well? You may know them as the Arkansas Razorbacks. And as such, I have Arkansas going farther than you might expect. And before you start throwing fresh produce at your smart television while you watch me, hear me out. Because guess what? Arkansas I have beating the Kansas Jayhawks in round two. Yeah, that's right. You heard me, and I, I get it. In an ideal world, somehow both of these teams would lose. In fact, if the Yellowstone Super Volcano is going to blow, you know what? This might actually be the perfect moment at the tip-off of this basketball game. I'm kidding, folks. But, but really, I am going to pick the upset here in round two and send the Jayhawks packing. But I will have Arkansas then going home in the next round to the Connecticut Huskies. And you know what? Speaking of SEC bias, man, you all are really going to make fun of me for this one. And I don't blame you at all because I cannot believe I have Tennessee in the final four. I really can't. And I will probably hate myself. I can see it happening right now. Rick Barnes did it to me again when Tennessee loses in the first round of the tournament. Actually, wait, what am I saying? If they lose in the first round of the tournament, I will laugh at Tennessee. I'm not going to laugh at myself, but here's my take. I think their region is the weakest one of the four in the field, and most importantly, no one, and I mean no one that I've listened to, is picking Tennessee to do anything in this tournament. So it's a bit of game theory, really. And when it comes to game theory, here's what I'm talking about. I, I want you to pick teams sometimes that have a statistical profile, which Tennessee certainly does. We've brought, we've been over and over again, how much the, the analytics, the predictive metrics like Tennessee still at this point on paper. So if you want to go unconventional, I just think that's one of the best picks you can do because a, a team that has a high upside that conventional wisdom has just gone completely against. But again, depends on how big your pool is. This is the type of move I'm making if I'm in a large pool. Like back in the day, I was on the floor of the Chicago Board of Trade, and there were hundreds of people in that pool. So you had to get a little bit wild. Because if you just picked the chalk, well, you're just going to end up tying with 10 other people probably, and maybe you'll win the coin and flip, but probably not on the tiebreaker. So to me, while I totally get why nobody's picking Tennessee, they lost Ziegler, they lost their point guard, but did they look that bad against Missouri? Tiger fans, was it like Missouri just blew the doors off of Tennessee? No, Missouri had to play very well in that game and execute incredibly well down the stretch to actually beat the Vols. And again, I'm not saying this is what I would bet my life on, that Tennessee is going to make the Final Four. But 
I'm a big believer in going against the grain in a realistic fashion. I think Arkansas fits the bill there, and I think Tennessee does as well. And if there's anything that I haven't done well in my bracket so far that I question, I don't think I have enough Big 12 teams going far enough. I have Texas going a long way, but otherwise, I don't know. Maybe I could do a little better. The other unconventional pick, and I guess I'll just give you my entire Final Four here. Of course, I've got Alabama and Tennessee facing off. Alabama taking them down. Then on the other side of the bracket, well, Texas, as I said before, but the slightly unconventional pick is Gonzaga. Just have a feeling on Gonzaga this year. They seem to be flying under the radar a bit. Obviously, I have Kansas being knocked out early in their region. I'm not a believer in UCLA as much with Jalen Clark's injury. So to me, give me Gonzaga, a team that's flying under the radar right now for whatever whatever reason. And ultimately, I'm going to have Gonzaga losing in the national championship game, 71 to 68 to the Crimson Tide. And finally, just real quick here, a couple couple bets for you in the first round that I like, a couple sides. You know, of course, 12 of the last 14 years, which honestly seems a little low. I would have said every year, it seems like. But really, 12 out of 14 is a pretty crazy trend that a 12 seed has upset a five seed, at least one every year, 12 of the last 14 years. Well, I think that trend is actually putting in a little bit of bias here because I think St. Mary's should be more than a four and a half point favorite over Virginia Commonwealth. It just on paper, I just think St. Mary's, I have Gonzaga going a long way. Well, St. Mary's isn't too much worse on paper than the Zags. So To me, four and a half points, I just don't see VCU as being the same kind of quality. I'll give the points there. And finally, another one I like, Boise State, plus one and a half over Northwestern. As much as I'm biased pro-SEC, I'm biased anti-Big Ten this year. And to me, Northwestern, once you get past Purdue, it was just all kind of a bunch of mediocrity in the Big Ten this year. So the fact that Northwestern finished second, doesn't do much for me. I think Boise State is every bit as much is every bit as good as they are, so give me the one and a half points. Again, give me one and a half points with Boise State, and I'll give the four and a half with St. Mary's. So until tomorrow, when post game, I'll have a show up for you as quickly as possible after the Missouri Utah State game. Hopefully we'll have a, a rousing Tiger victory to talk about. But either way, I'll be here for you giving you the straight dirt from the tiger's mouth. So, until next time, I am John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.